welcome back to the Off Good family. Today I want to remake some um, what I call camping candles. I did a video, I think, where I made them on video, and I've done a video where I've shown them actually being lit. Um, I'll put a card up here somewhere. Um, basically what it is is just a wax, um, cardboard encased in wax in um, a tuna tin, and you light it, and I originally sort of designed and built them for emergency you know um, fire so you could light and just boil some water or cook your food just over a very small thing um, I went camping did a solo camp out recently link up there or there who knows anyway and um, I was shocked by actually how much light it gave off I had a fire going and then to be able to record I needed uh, two different lights on me I lit the camping candle and for the next about hour and a half it gave off so much light I didn't need any of the torches or any of the lighting just for filming you know so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do my usual one which is just well I'll, I'll explain that in a sec um, but I'm gonna do some experiments and I'm gonna see if I can make ones that um, light brighter or like um, last longer or possibly ignite easier you know a lot of different things I'll probably make uh, three or four different ones and then I'm going camping hopefully next week and I'll be able to then test them out and see if they work, see which ones work best, if me fiddling with them makes them any better, or if, you know, the first one I made is the best way of making it. So, let's get on, I'll talk you through everything, I've made a few little bits and pieces and a few tests, so I can show you what I've done so far. When I first made my first ever camping candle, I did it over the um, stove, and I did it in, um, I had a a pot inside boiling water and then I was putting the wax inside that pot just so that I wouldn't overheat the wax and ignite and so on and so on. This time I was a bit lazy and I decided to make myself a little indoor stove. All it is, I've cut out one area here where I can put a tea light candle, cut some holes in it so the air can get into it and then I place my other tin on the top with the wax in and this actually worked really really well last night obviously it's razor sharp in places so if you're going to do it this way just be careful um, but I'll show you that and then um, I'll melt down some wax and we'll get on with it okay for this project you'll need some strips of cardboard which correspond to the thickness of the tin you're going to use for your actual camping candle um, I've got these bigger tins here and I'll explain why in a minute You'll need something to actually melt it in, and this is just um, another tin that I've put a little um, peaked edge on so it'll pour properly. Um, a stirring device and some form of wax. I normally use um, little tea light candles, but I've found this old um, candle that was just sitting lying around doing nothing, so I'll be using that as well today. That's all you need to be able to make, well, excluding those, that's all you need to be able to make a normal camping candle. But I'm going to be doing some experiments, and I've got petroleum jelly and match, um, water stormproof matches. So they are going to be part of an experiment today as well. Now, these two tin types of tins here, this is for tuna and this I think was for sweet corn. And obviously they're the si same diameter, but one significantly taller than the other. And what I would like to do, but I won't be doing this time, is if you were to drill some holes along here and then only half fill it, you'd actually be able to rest your pot directly on this because enough air will be being sucked in through the holes and once this is lit, you'd be able to boil your water directly on it. Um, but obviously it's got a bigger presence then in your bag. That's why I always stick to the smaller ones. But I did want to experiment with these, but I haven't got time today. Now here's one I've started. But um, I need to fill that up with some more wax, but I'm, I'm not going to do much with that one on this video. Right. As I say, this is what I'm using to um, melt my wax. I put my tea light candle in here, put my container, which is exactly the same size, so it just clips on like that. And then it melts the wax. You know, it took about 15 minutes, I would say. All that we need to do is basically make a wick for these. And what you do, make sure there's no sellotape on them. You don't want that nasty smoke. You take your strips of cardboard, which as I say, correspond to the same height as your actual tin that you're using, or as high as you want the flames, because this is just the wick, basically. Roll one up, plonk it in, and you'll see it it springs back out I'm 
Roll up another one. Take your original one. Pull that tight. And following the same way round, just wrap the second one around it. And this just give, it fills more areas, I found, than doing it with a longer piece. I don't know why. Okay, now plunk it in. And then just open it up so that there are gaps in places like that. And that's perfect. If you're doing more than one at this point, do the other two. I'll do that in a sec. I want to get the um, wax melting. These are very, very cheap tea light candles and it's it's quite an advantage number one they're not in these um, aluminium trays that, um, you know they're not held in at all but even better than that the actual wick isn't held in at all either so all you need to do that's it you've got the wick out and that's all you want um, one thing I found that's quite good for these because they're aluminium um, is they're good for starting off if you're melting down aluminium shove a few of these in and they, they melt very very quickly and then you can start, once you've got the puddle going you can start melting more aluminium, so I always actually keep these this one, the actual, it, it started to be um, used so that the, the actual wick is now solid in there but if you just snap it in half you should be able to then just peel the wick out we're going to be breaking these up anyway to make them melt quicker what's funny about these really cheap candles is they haven't actually been melted into place what they've done is they've got, you know, um, wax beads or wax balls or something and they've just, um, a, from what I can tell, pressure fit them together so if you break them they actually just turn into a dust, like into little balls. Okay, when, once you think you've got enough, that's by no means enough, we'll start breaking them up and putting them in our pot that we're going to... Um, melt everything in right I'm gonna leave it at that for now and what I want to do is I'll just keep adding it afterwards then I'm gonna start cutting this up but this is scented and I would advise against using a scented candle but I will use this as a last resort I'll see how many wax candles I've got okay we put our candle in now if you are going to be making your own little thing like this and it keeps going out you just need to make more holes it's just not getting enough air Okay, while that's melting down, we'll get on with putting the rest of the bits of um, cardboard in. Now, I found these work better with thicker cardboard, but this is very thin. If you can get, you know, the double, double walled stuff, that works better. But whatever cardboard you got, really. Now, these are perfectly fine left like they are. Once you put the wax in you and light them, say, over your campfire or whatever, they light and they give off really good light. One thing I've started doing is putting match heads, well, not match heads, but um, half a match, and pushing it down into the, car the holes in the perforated cardboard. And then, when you want to, you can actually ignite them a lot easier. So if you ha can't get a campfire going... You can just light them 
and they will be your you know your emergency lighting or emergency heating and you can just plonk them in the holes in the cardboard like that and what you have to do then is when you um, cover it all with wax make sure you cover the match heads and then they're basically waterproof and then when when you get to wherever you're going you can ignite the match heads and it will light but I, I tried one when I was out and about recently and it had been about two years in my um, in my camping bag and the matches lit but they didn't stay alight so, so you know something happens to them over time so just be careful be, be warned of that you can put as many match heads in as you want and it just gives it a boost when you first light it So you've got now a little, a little cluster of them. Now with a sharp knife, cut along the edge of your, the striking plate, whatever that's called. And now once you've finished and the, the wax has cooled and dried, sellotape this to this side like that so it's sellotaped the wrong way around. And what that means is then you can peel back the sellotape even in wet conditions. This should be dry and then you can strike it and you should have a flame. But as I say I'm doing some experiments with this one this time. So what I want to do next is try some stormproof matches and see if they light better. And I'm also going to mix some petroleum jelly in with a small amount of the wax and pour that over the top and see if that gives it a better chance of ignition you know, in windy conditions and so on. One thing I tested before starting was whether these matches will ignite using the same strip as the other matches and they do so I can just stick another one of these to the side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snap it off at the base of the match like that and I'm going to stick that down and this works almost like a fuse to a bomb kind of styly um, so you light it and hopefully it will go all the way down and burn all the way into it and then it's you know it's already started but I'm going to put a few in I'll put three in each of the other ones Now I push one in a bit too far, but it doesn't matter. But these two now are stuck above, so when we want to light it, it should be easy. Okay, so I'll put three in this one as well, the three waterproof ones. Push them down. There you go, like that. Melting it like this is not the quickest way to melt it. But it is an easy way to do it, you know, wherever you are. You don't have to be in a kitchen or whatever. As I said, I'm going to be having like two control samples. So we're going to have this one with just wax in it, which is matchsticks. This one with just match in it, um, just wax in it, and it's the stormproof matches. And then these two are going to have normal wax all the way up to near the top and then I'm going to mix wax and pet petroleum jelly together see what happens, I honestly don't know um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill them all up I haven't got enough wax here by anywhere near enough but I'll fill them all up to the top except the two that are going to have the petroleum jelly in and I'll just leave maybe a centimetre so this is the one with the um, stormproof matches 
what you want to do very carefully and very slowly is pour the wax in but trying to get it to cover everything Try not to cover everything else. The more wax that permeates the cardboard, the more it will act like a wick later on. And you want to try and fill it right up to the top and do this on a level surface. Although there's all these barriers of cardboard there, you will find that it can overflow in certain places. There you go. And that is now full to the top. And as you'll notice, I've left stuff in there. I'm not now going to go straight ahead and do the other ones because it's easier to melt things if you've already got a pool of it. So carefully move this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to get some more wax on to melt, um, but I won't show you me filling all the other ones up. Just bear in mind, I'm only going to fill the... Um, two that are going to have the um, petroleum jelly on, I'm only going to fill them up like three quarters. Right, so I've half filled these up off camera like I said, and now I've got a, um, well it's about three quarters full of melted wax. And I've got a huge dollop of um, petroleum jelly. I've got no idea what will happen. So far it hasn't exploded, which is good. I'm hoping that because it's a wax like substance it will melt as well. It does seem to be. Now I heated this up on the stove because I knew I'd need it hotter than just with the tea light candle, plus I'd run out of tea light candles. There you go, that's actually completely melted. Handy. Has it? Yep. Now, because these have already had wax in and dried, it means that the cardboard is solid, so I've got to be more careful with pouring it in because it won't just, um, you know, flood through the cardboard. It, the cardboard will now act as a barrier. I'm going to try and get an equal amount in each. Right now, um, I don't know if it's showing up on screen, but um, this wax is a lot more yellow and that's because I used the block of um, candle that I had because I'd run out of tea light candles. But now I'm going to wait for them to set and harden and then we'll go camping and we'll test them out. Now what I've decided to do is only test the two new ones that I've made with the pet petroleum jelly because I know what the actual normal ones are like um, for burning. Um, the only thing I need to check is whether the which match head works best but I can do that with these and I can keep these for another day and I don't really want to be carrying too much stuff in my pack anyway okay well I'll go camping after these have hardened and dried okay so here they both are this is the one I used with matches this is the one I've used with is it still matches or is it storm matches storm matches and then these are both with the um, petroleum jelly so I'm going to light this one first I think and see how how much light it gives off first I'm going to test with the actual strip like before oh it stayed in the light for longer And that seems to be lighting. So, like I said before, after a while, for some reason, they just stop being able to light, and I don't know why. So I'll leave that one to burn, and I will get back to you in a bit with showing you how much light it gives off. Okay, and there's the light of it now. This has been on for about five minutes, and hang on, this is with my headlamp on as well. But it's actually giving off more light than the the fire as you can see 
pretty effective little thing really. About 15 minutes in and it's still giving a huge amount of light. In fact, you can now walk around the entire campsite without needing your headlamp on, although I've still got mine on, I don't know why. So, pretty cool for something so small. Okay, this has been going now for an hour and it's still going absolutely perfectly. I've put new wood on the fire so it's gone down a little bit, but that thing is just giving out most of the light in the camp, still. It's incredible. I don't think I'm even going to have to light the other ones. I was going to test them both, as I said, but I think it'll be a waste. I think that one will be a light for as long as we need to until bedtime. We're about two hours, 20 minutes in now, and it's still going as bright as it was. I think it might have lost a little bit of the light, but every now and again it just flashes to light again, as if as if it's lighting a match head, which it's not, but just suddenly it'll be a light for a few minutes, and like really bright, and then it'll go back down again. Right, that is now three and a half hours, and it's still a light. It's not giving off much heat, much light or anything, but it is still a light, so you know. That's pretty damn impressive considering all it is is a bit of, you know, a bit of cardboard, a bit of wax and a bit of petroleum jelly. But yep, yeah, still going strong. Well, still going weak, but it's still going. <laughs>